Hello. Quarter to ten on a Sunday. A sort of a follow-up of my previous video. Approaching the idea of addressing from the other side of the equation. We talk about communicating with our Filipina. There's a lot of videos out there that suggest that it's important to understand she who must be obeyed. But also, for a Filipina, it's important also to understand how we as foreigners see life as well. When we are having a conversation amongst each other, for a foreigner we wait for what we might call a gap, a gap in the conversation. And then we try and intervene our point, or maybe to reiterate what we need to say that may be being discussed. And we do that on the assumption that because people stop talking or there's a, a lull between the words, that it's okay to interrupt at that point. Now, of course, if you try that, you may well be met by your Filipina, who will think it's being rude to butt in, when in fact you're trying to be polite. Now, for you as a Filipina, you need to understand that this is our culture. Our culture is not necessarily to be rude. It's not in our culture, and I say our being all Westerners. Many Westerners have different ways of approaching issues. Americans, for instance, have a totally different way of dealing with issues than, say, an English person, or an Australian, or a German. Now, that's not to say that one is better than the other. It just means that we all operate slightly differently. If we say, or shall we just use Americans for the moment, and I'm not picking on Americans per se, but Americans tend to shoot from the hip. In other words, they say it as it comes out of their mouth. They often don't think of the consequences of their action. They often just act like we would call a bull at a gate. In other words, trying to get their point through very quickly. Now, is that right or is that wrong? I would suggest neither. Because for an English person, we try and be respectful. And I'm sure Americans feel they're doing the same. But for us, we know we're being respectful. Why? Because we're English. And that's the difference between us and Americans. That's the difference between us and Australians. So if you have an Australian husband, or a British husband, or an American husband, you will be experiencing Western culture from three different ways. Because you've been occupied, or should I say a lot of Americans have been here, you've learnt the Western ways in many ways, Ooh, excuse the pun, you've learnt the ways of American things. This is the way we as foreigners do things, the American way. Now, you may think that's okay, but when you're confronted with English people, who operate differently from Americans, you may well find a different kind of person. You may see them as quieter, you may see them as 
maybe non-confrontational. But that doesn't actually happen because any foreigner who questions you as a Filipino, you unfortunately see it as a challenge. You see us as being maybe rude in many ways, but we don't intend it to happen that way. It's just the way you see things. Now, if you look at your romance that you have with your foreigner, it's going to be different between a Chinese person, an English person, a German person, an American and Australian. Because we all approach relationships from our perspective, from a foreigner's point of view. And we can't be all put in one basket like you can. Now I say that tongue in cheek, right? Meaning that because you're all Filipinos that we're looking for, we're looking for that perfect partner, we see you all as the same. We try and pick the right one, but often we judge you all with our, with our way of thinking from maybe the same position as you do us. Now, of course, if we were all handsome, it would be harder to choose, given that we're not all handsome, as you can see. It's not that difficult to work out why you choose us over your Filipino partner. Now, there's an assumption there, again, from a foreigner's point of view, that why do you choose a foreigner over one of your own? I might like to suggest that maybe you see us as sticking by you longer than their Filipina. Maybe you see us as more secure than what your husband who, or your boyfriend was as a Filipina can offer you. He's less likely to run off when you have a child. And I mean one between you and him. He's less likely to object to you having children from a previous relationship. Because really, many of us enjoy having an extended new family. Not all of us do though. Some of us bite our lip and we accept you with all of your baggage. And when I say baggage, it means your past, just like we have past. We have children from previous relationships. We have ex-wives, just like you have ex-boyfriends and ex-husbands. So, try to be a little bit more understanding when it comes to communication. To realise that we mean no harm when we put our point of view, or attempt to put our point of view to you. Spend the time to button your lip just for a little while, to listen to our point of view. It doesn't mean, like many times I'm told, that I'm not listening to what's being said, because I have a different point of view. And that doesn't mean I'm not listening at all. It just means my point of view doesn't seem to be getting through to you. So you need to learn also, like we have to learn about you. You have to learn to understand us as foreigners. I hope that helps you a little bit and I hope that my English is spoken in a way that you can understand me. So I'll say Salamat Po. You understand that and I mean respect. And I hope that you see this video in that light. And tune in for more thoughts from my day about things from your point of view about us as foreigners. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Remember it costs nothing. Thumbs up and press that notification button because we love to hear from you. And even if you do, comment in Tagalog or Ilocano 
we'll translate it so we can understand what you're saying because we really do want to know how you feel about us as foreigners. Bye now.